Hello friends, a very good day to all. I am Dr. Vishal Sooth, teacher educator. In the previous lessons, in this unit, we have learned and discussed about continuous and comprehensive evaluation. We have discussed and learned about the aspects, the features, the need, the objectives and tools and techniques of continuous and comprehensive evaluation. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to discuss about the quantitative and qualitative data and its use in continuous and comprehensive evaluation. So, our today's discussion, our today's lesson will focus on these main points which you can see on the screen. Our today's main points of discussion will be the quantitative and qualitative methods in evaluation. Then we will have some examples of quantitative and qualitative data. Then what are the tools and techniques available with us as a teacher of collecting data regarding the student's performance. Then we will differentiate between quantitative and qualitative data. What are the differences between the quantitative data and the qualitative data related to students achievement. And in the last part of today's discussion, we will focus or we will deliberate on what a teacher should do, whether he should use quantitative data or he should use qualitative data. So this will be the main framework of today's lesson which will mainly orient around the quantitative and the qualitative data gathered in continuous and comprehensive evaluation. So first of all, let us have a brief introductory remark about quantitative and qualitative evaluation techniques. You can see on the screen that as a teacher, you all sitting at different places, as a teacher, what you wish, what you require with re respect to students assessment. As a teacher, as a, an educator, our main requirement or our main wish is that the students assessment is to be carried out in a proper manner and for that we want both a number or a score or a grade or the marks and a description of that number or those marks. So as a teacher, when we assess the students, what we wish? We wish a number or marks should be there and what those marks indicate, what those marks reflect. We require those both things. This means both quantitative as well as qualitative techniques are essential for students evaluation. Because number or the marks that is the quantitative information about the students performance. Whereas the description or the explanation or reflection about that number that is the qualitative information about the student's academic achievement. So, as a teacher, we require both the quantitative and the qualitative techniques for student's evaluation. Now, which type of evaluation technique is to be used? Whether the quantitative evaluation technique is to be used or the qualitative techniques are to be employed by the teacher? This is decided on the basis of the purpose of evaluation. As a teacher, why we are conducting the evaluation? What is the purpose of conducting the student's evaluation? This decides whether to use quantitative evaluation technique or qualitative evaluation technique. And the second thing, what type of tools or devices or instruments you are using to evaluate the student. That also decides the nature of the evaluation method. If you are using an achievement test to measure the learning level of the student, then obviously the 
quantitative method is being employed by you. But on the other hand, if you are using observation, if you are making use of interview for assessing the student's performance, then definitely that is the qualitative evaluation technique being employed by you. That means the evaluation method which you use as a teacher in the classroom or in the school is determined by the purpose of your evaluation, why you are conducting that evaluation and what instruments or what tools or devices you are using to employ or to carry out that evaluation. That means the decision regarding the quantitative evaluation or the qualitative evaluation technique is done on the purpose of the evaluation and the instrument used to evaluate the student's performance. Now, evaluation methods and the data gathered through those techniques, if the data which is coming to us, just like if we are using an academic achievement test, then the data, is com the data are coming in the form of marks. But if we are using observation as a technique, evaluation technique, then the data are coming in the form of our observations, in the form of our opinion. That means the evaluation technique and the data coming through those evaluation technique can be grouped into two basic categories. Now, what these two basic categories are? If the data or the evaluation techniques or the data coming out of those evaluation techniques are quantitative in nature, then we say the evaluation technique is quantitative in itself. But if the data are coming in the form of observations, coming in the form of opinions, then we say we are making use of qualitative evaluation techniques. So, learners, we can classify the evaluation techniques into two main types. One is the quantitative evaluation techniques and the other is the qualitative evaluation technique. The data coming through the quantitative evaluation technique is quantitative in nature, is quantified in nature, is in the form of numbers, marks or scores. Whereas the data coming out of the qualitative evaluation technique are mostly in the form of words, views, opinions. So, evaluation techniques can be classified into two types. One is quantitative evaluation techniques or qualitative evaluation techniques. Then, quantitative and qualitative evaluation techniques in evaluation. What we mean by this? What is the concept? In general, quantitative evaluation methods or techniques produce numbers, while qualitative methods capture descriptive or explanatory data. That means the qualitative methods, they produce the data regarding the student's characteristics in a descriptive or explanatory manner or in a reflective manner. The data are quantitative if they are in terms of numbers, scores, marks. And it is qualitative if the data are in terms of words. However, we should keep in consideration that qualitative data can also include photos, videos, audio recordings and other non-text data. That means the quantitative evaluation techniques produce marks or scores or numbers as data, whereas qualitative methods capture description of the particular characteristics of the individual or description about the performance of the student in a particular activity. And such type of qualitative data are either in terms of words, opinions, photos, videos, audio recordings or other non-text data are also fall under this qualitative data. Now, let us have some examples from quantitative and qualitative data with regard to the assessment of students. Suppose there is a student in your class 
राहुल हैज सिक्योर्ड 80 मार्क्स आउट ऑफ 100 इन मैथमेटिक्स इन क्लास फाइव देर इज ए स्टूडेंट हु इज सिक्योरिंग 80 मार्क्स आउट ऑफ 100. दिस इंडिकेट्स ए क्वांटिटेटिव पिक्चर अबाउट राहुल दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टूडेंट इन मैथमेटिक्स वी आर रिफ्लेक्टिंग हिज मार्क्स दैट ही हैज ऑप्टेन्ड एटी मार्क्स दिस इज क्वांटिटेटिव डेटा रिलेटेड टू the assessment or evaluation of rahul now consider these three statements on the screen vrishank is good at dancing first statement is this second statement is vishar's handwriting is poor see the third statement aarti attracts everybody while singing all these three statements represent some qualitative information qualitative data about the individual student based on his or her assessment that means you have assessed vrishank while he was participating in a dance competition or in a dance activity and you made a statement that he is good at dancing similarly you have observed vrisharth while teaching learning process in the classroom and you have observed that his handwriting is poor this is your observation aarti attracts everybody while singing that mean you have observed while aarti was singing and she attracts everybody while she sings a song now in all of these statements no description about the characteristic of the child is given in terms of numbers scores or marks rather qualitative information is there so this is qualitative data whereas rahul has secured 80 marks this is quantitative data remember one thing both type of quantitative and qualitative evaluation techniques produce a richer and more comprehensive understanding about students learning in its varied aspects that means in evaluation we cannot resort only to quantitative data or merely to qualitative evaluation techniques it depends what type of activity is there what type of content matter is there that will decide whether to use quantitative technique or qualitative technique or make use of a mix of both the quantitative and the qualitative evaluation techniques this must be remembered by us as a teacher now what are the methods of collecting data what methods are available with us to collect data regarding students characteristics students behavioral characteristics students achievement there are quantitative methods like achievement test you take the achievement test of the students you take the performance test of the students you conduct experiments you administer the questionnaires or psychometric tests all these are the methods through which uh, quantitative methods through which the quantitative data regarding students characteristics can be collected and these type of data focus on numbers and frequencies rather than on meaning or experience these type of quantitative methods provide information which can be easily analyzed statistically and are fairly reliable that means quantitative methods are fairly reliable they are valid and the data produced out of these quantitative methods can be easily analyzed with the help of statistical techniques but remember one thing such type of quantitative methods or quantitative data hardly provide in depth description about the characteristic or about the achievement of the student now the other method of collecting data regarding the student's achievement or his characteristics are qualitative methods just like case studies interviews observations these are the qualitative methods of collecting data which are concerned with describing meaning rather than with drawing statistical inference provide a more in depth and rich description but are subjective in nature that means qualitative methods they are not statistical based or 
on the basis of qualitative data no statistical inference can be made rather than the in depth or rich description about the student's characteristics his achievement or performance in a particular area can be made by making use of qualitative methods and these qualitative methods include case studies interviews you observe the student that observation is a qualitative method and on the basis of your observation you make a value judgment about the student's achievement that is qualitative evaluation method employed by you to assess the student's performance and to grade him as per the requirements so quantitative and qualitative methods are there now what tools and techniques are used to collect data for collecting data which is quantitative in nature you can see on the screen that achievement tests surveys questionnaires pre tests post tests existing database like school records or crfs cumulative record forms of the students these are the tools or the techniques which are available with you to collect data about the students past performance or present performance but such tools or techniques will provide you quantitative data in the form of numbers or scores achievement test suppose you administer an achievement test on the students in five, fifth class in mathematics then the result will be the marks of the students that will come to you similarly surveys questionnaires the school records the previous achievement of the students in previous classes in different subjects these all type of data are quantitative in nature on the other hand the qualitative data can be collected with the help of tools like observation interviews case studies portfolio projects assignments focus group discussions field notes diaries video audio recordings photographs pictures and reports minutes of meetings all these type of tools or all these type of your techniques employed by you to assess the students will provide you qualitative data that data will be in the form of words in the form of opinions will will be in the form of observations so there are different tools and techniques to collect quantitative data or to collect qualitative data which you can see on the screen now what is the difference between quantitative and qualitative data this must be clear to us as a teacher you can see on the screen quantitative data explains who what when how much and how many that means how much marks has been obtained how many persons were there this all tells us about the number so this is quantitative data whereas qualitative data explains how and why why this student is lagging in mathematics your observation your interaction with the parents can tell you about his or her problems why that particular student is lagging in mathematics that explanation there those opinions given by the parents or the peers or your colleagues will be qualitative data similarly quantitative data deals with numbers on the other hand the qualitative data deal with descriptions why a student is showing particular characteristic particular behavior the what are the reasons what are the causes for those behaviors or characteristics why the student's achievement is low this deals with descriptions and this type of data are qualitative in nature quantitative data can be measured and observed exactly that means the data which is in the form of numbers scores or marks can be measured accurately exactly whereas on the other hand 
the qualitative data can be observed and assessed approximately it can be estimated but not to the finest extent to the accurate extent because opinions views can be changed could be could may get changed through a period of time but the quantitative data or the data in the form of numbers remains same so it can be measured observed accurately and exactly the other difference is the quantitative data it is usually gathered by surveys from large number of respondents whereas qualitative data can be collected individually or from a small group of respondents that means quantitative data is voluminous in nature qualitative data can be collected from small group of individuals quantitative data it is useful when pieces of information required can be counted mathematically and analyzed using statistical methods that means statistical techniques can be used to analyze what information we are getting from that data for that statistical techniques can be employed and it is only possible in case of quantitative data what is the average marks of the students of fifth class in mathematics for that the mean or average can be calculated sim on the other hand qualitative data it is useful when a broader understanding and explanation is required on a particular topic or issue for which quantitative data alone is not sufficient that means in order to know about the causes of a particular event or of a particular behavior shown by a group of students or shown by a particular student why that particular student is showing such type of behavior why the absenteeism among student is there in order to know the causes of that absenteeism or even the delinquent behavior of the students there the data will be qualitative in nature and that quantitative data will not serve the purpose alone so these are the differences the other differences in quantitative and qualitative data you can see on the screen quantitative data is used when accurate and precise data are required that that means when preciseness is required in assessment when accuracy is required in assessment quantitative data are most useful on the other hand when information is needed on what students think about a particular situation what are their priorities it is useful so when information is required on these aspects then the data will be qualitative in nature the qualitative data is also useful while seeking to understand why students behave in a certain way why the students are behaving in a particular way why they are not obeying the school guidelines or school directions in order to know the causes the reasons for this the data collected by the teacher through different sources will be qualitative in nature but that data will have lower accuracy less preciseness because the opinions or the views can not remain static at all the times there are chances that the views or opinions may change over a period of time due to different circumstances which a teacher which the peer group or which the colleagues or which the school administration face on the due to those reasons there are chances that the opinions or views may change so the preciseness in the qualitative data or accuracy in the qualitative data remains less whereas it is very much required in case of the quantitative data then quantitative data ensures objectivity it is much objective in nature reliable in nature and there is ability to generalize on the basis of quantitative data but the quantitative data as we have already discussed it hardly provides any in depth description 
about the occurrence of a particular behavior of a child. Why the student is not participating in a particular type of activity? Why the student is not able to participate in cultural programs or in debate competition? The information regarding this, the reasons for this cannot be provided through quantitative data. Whereas this is only possible through qualitative data with the help of interview with the peer group, with the help of interview with the parents, with the help of interview with the other colleagues. So qualitative data can't be generalized. It is individual specific. It is person specific. It is problem specific in nature. Quantitative data can be generated through the same tool irrespective of the context. That means the quantitative data can be generated second time with the help of same tool. Irrespective of the context, suppose you take an achievement test of the student today in mathematics and the students will get some scores or marks in, uh, in that test. You take the same test of the same students after 10 days, you will again have same data or similar data related to mathematics achievement of those students. But in case of qualitative data, context is much important in this case. Because what the context is, in which context a particular behavior has been shown by the student, that context when uh, will get changed, the whole situation, the particular behavior shown by the students will definitely go to change. So that means context is very much important in case of qualitative data. Then, now what a teacher should do? Whether to use quantitative data or qualitative data? A million dollar question for you as a teacher. Whether you should use quantitative data for assessing the students or evaluating the student or you should use qualitative data to assess the student's achievement. Data should be used from multiple sources. That means as a teacher, you should employ different sources so as to enrich your decision making about learning. And that will be beneficial for every student. That will improve the results. That means as a teacher, you should use different sources different tools, different devices while assessing or evaluating the students. You should use both the quantitative as well as qualitative techniques to assess the student's achievement, to assess the student's performance, to assess their behavioral characteristic. And this will finally lead to improved learning among the students and will lead to increased school results. So you should use both the quantitative as well as qualitative data for assessing the student's performance. Multiple sources may include formative and summative assessments, performance assessments, observations, work samples, portfolios, assignments, projects or self-reporting techniques. That means different tools and techniques which we have earlier discussed in the lessons those should be used by you as a teacher to assess the student's performance in different scholastic as well as co-scholastic areas. The use of multiple resources of data offers a balanced and more comprehensive analysis of students than any single type or source of data. That means if you will use multiple sources of data, you will have a more balanced and more comprehensive analysis of students their abilities, their competencies, their sk skills, then if you will use only a single type or single source of data, then the information will be or the data will be incomplete in itself and you will definitely have wrong inference or improper inference about the child's ability, which is not good for any healthy educational system. You must realize that data alone can do much to inform decision making. That means your teaching learning process, what type of teaching learning strategies are to be employed, 
what type of teaching learning methods are to be employed what type of teaching learning material or instructional material is to be used for that you require the quantitative as well as qualitative data your decisions will be based on that data which will be related to students assessment and that will increase the effectiveness of your teaching your teaching will be effective the students learning will be improved thorough analysis and cross checking of data suppose you have collected data through different sources the cross checking of that data are also to be ensured so that the decisions regarding teaching learning process the decisions regarding the students learning habits or learning styles can be taken in an appropriate manner that means the data from multiple sources should be used by you as a teacher so that the teaching learning process can be made more effective the learning among the students can be enhanced to the optimum level so learners what we have learned in today's lesson firstly we discussed about quantitative and qualitative methods in evaluation then we had some examples of quantitative and qualitative data in which uh, rahul has scored 80 marks out of 100 whereas vrishank is good at dancing aarti attracts everyone through her singing so these examples were related to quantitative and qualitative data then we discussed about tools and techniques for collecting quantitative data and qualitative data and in the last part we discussed in detail about the differences between quantitative and qualitative data and we made an inference we made this or discussion on whether a teacher should use quantitative or qualitative data and we reached to the conclusion that for a teacher to improve his teaching or to improve the effectiveness in teaching he should use multiple sources of data and employ both quantitative as well as qualitative assessment data to bring improvement in his teaching and to enhance learning among the students i hope learners that you have all understood about all these aspects which are related to quantitative and qualitative evaluation techniques and data in continuous and comprehensive evaluation Thank you have a nice day